Welcome back to Film Master Reviews. I'm Adam J. For future content on this channel, please click that like button and that subscribe button. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is probably the biggest staple of my childhood. Whether it was the original cartoon, the toys, those first two films, or even the comic books, I was a hero and a half shell addict as a kid, and I am still a big fan now. I actually had the opportunity to meet all the original series voice actors some years back at a convention. All of them were awesome, stand-up guys who love their fans, and yes, I got all of their autographs. It was a good day. I love these characters, I love their lore, I love their villains, so when movies come around that screw these things up, I tend to get a bit testy to say the least. Shay, teach me a story, Storms. Well, according to the original comic and source material, the turtles were actually April O'Neil's pets. Really? Yeah, and they were. Oh my god, I never, I never and, and know they, that. They learned martial arts from a book that Splinter found in the sewer. Re you mean Splinter wasn't a ninja all this time? No, no, no. Oh my god, see, I was so confused about that. This movie fucking sucked! Yeah, to answer your question, something like that. To say I utterly despise the Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtles films would be an understatement. Both films were absolute ass garbage, and I know I'm not alone in thinking that. So when it came to Mutant Mayhem, I'll admit, I was pretty psyched. Look, let's be real here. In terms of live action, you're probably never gonna top that original film. But you might be able to do it in animation instead. From the first trailer, my ass was happy. The turtle designs were perfect and not overly stylized. The film decided to go with mutant villains instead of Shredder, which was a welcome change of pace. The mutant villains looked awesome. The animation looked stunning. And it was being co-written and directed by Jeff Rowe, who directed The Mitchells vs. The Machines, a movie I only watched this past year and am still kicking myself in the ass for not watching earlier. That film was simply outstanding. Yes, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem looked amazing and gave me absolutely no reason to panic. Start panicking! Permission to freak out! See, now that's some bullshit. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I mean, I. I may personally find that information a bit, um, uh, what's the word, um, oh yeah, uh, tasteless, and a complete slap in the face to both Eastman and Laird, but whatever, that trailer made this film look great. I I'm sure we'll get a winner this time. I'm gonna go see the film right now, I'll be right back. Two hours later. Uh, You know what, um, I think Austin Powers can say it better than me. Very shagadelic, baby, yeah! <laughs> Having said that, I do have some thoughts. Okay, overall, let me say this. There's a lot of good things in this movie, so let me just get them out of the way. First and foremost, the animation. Uh, I swear, between this, Across the Spider-Verse, Super Mario Brothers, and even Elemental, very underrated film, you should definitely check it out. We are getting spoiled with the quality of animated films in 2023. Wish I could say the same for live action films this year, but I'll take what I can get. Mutant Mayhem is a beautiful, vibrant film that runs at a brisk pace. I love how New York City is animated here. I love the designs of the characters. I love how fluent the character movement is and how gorgeous the lighting is. It's all perfect in that regard. The actors playing these roles all do great work. I don't think they could have gotten more enjoyable child actors to play the Turtles if they tried. They all have good chemistry and play off each other very well. As they feel so kid-like and playful. Love these actors. Jackie Chan Splinter is pretty funny. This is probably the funniest he's been since the first Rush Hour film. Ice Cube stands out as the villain Superfly. Paul Rudd is perfectly casted as Mondo Gecko. Loved his interactions with Mikey. I found April O'Neil to be an absolutely delightful character, a character with clear goals, aspirations, and her own personal obstacles to overcome. The film's themes of family and acceptance are well woven into the narrative, the music is excellent, and the action is well directed. In the long run, I do recommend taking your kids to see it. I think they'll have a blast. And that's about it. Okay, guys, here's the part of my job that I hate. The story of this movie isn't great. In fact, um, I dare say, um, it kind of sucks. That is its biggest problem. It, it, it has solid themes, it has solid characters for the most part, but as far as the overall narrative is concerned, 
it's incredibly weak and mediocre and reeks of missed opportunities. And unfortunately, I cannot express my problems without revealing some minor spoilers. So from here on out, there will be minor spoilers. You've been warned. And before anyone goes off on me, I just recommended the damn film for your kids. So if you could refrain from going the way of Nazi Germany in the comment section, that would be great. Let's get the obvious problem out of the way right now. Ugh. You casted Giancarlo Esposito as Baxter Stockman. You casted Gus motherfucking Frank as Baxter Stockman. Let me tell you something. If there was ever such a thing as a perfect casting choice, this is it. This right here. You got Giancarlo Esposito playing one of the most infamous villains in Turtle Lore. Awesome. So what does the movie do with him? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! He's dead in the opening following an explosion. Instead of him becoming a fly, the fly is just one of his experiments. Stupid! You're so stupid! L look, okay, L look, I, I may like Ice Cube as Superfly in this film. I, I do, he has some funny moments. I mean, okay, fair enough, he's, he's kind of a ripoff of Magneto in the first X-Men movie. Um, right down to having the exact same plan of building a machine to change the DNA of humans to make the mutants and having a bunch of mutant lackeys by his side that he refers to as his brotherhood and my god! Something very familiar about all this. Uh, and regardless of this, however, Ice Cube is enjoyable. He does well selling the character and does fine work overall. That being said, you show me one person, one person on this earth who would take Ice Cube as a villain over Giancarlo Esposito, and I will show you someone who's clearly full of shit. Not only is this a waste of a great villain, it's an even bigger waste of a great actor. You literally could have picked up a random guy at a grocery store to play Stockman here. He is nothing but a waste of potential, and Esposito deserved better. Some of the extra mutants are enjoyable. You know, you got Mondo Gecko, you got Leatherhead, you got Wingnuts, and Ray Filet, but they're just kind of there. They're completely interchangeable. You could have had any mutants from Turtles lore occupying these roles, and not a damn thing would be different in the film. In fact, they're so inconsequential, it feels like they're only here to justify the film's title. It reminds me of X-Men First Class in that regard, where you had mutants like Banshee, Angel Salvador, Darwin, and Havoc. But at the end of the day, these mutants were completely superfluous and could have been any other mutant from the X-Men canon. They didn't matter. It's the same thing here. It feels less essential and more like grab bag bullshit. Again, I enjoyed some of them, especially Mondo Gecko. But if you replaced Mondo Gecko with, say, Ice Cream Kitty, Nothing in the story would change. If you removed Mondo Gecko entirely, nothing in the story would change. He and the rest of the mutants are just there. Also, Leatherhead is a woman now. She gets like three lines in the whole movie. It, it, it makes me wonder why they even bothered having Leatherhead here at all let alone changing the character's gender for seemingly no reason. In addition, look, I, I thought John Cena and Seth Rogen were great choices for Rocksteady and Bebop. Honestly, I didn't even mind their origin change. I really didn't. So them just being mutated animals in this version was fine with me. I'm totally okay with it. That being said, making them good guys was not, not doing it for me. I did not like that aspect at all, and it kind of ruined them for me. Maybe it's just me. I mean, call me fucking crazy. I do not want to see the villains who almost murdered Donatello with a sledgehammer in the comics being buddy-buddy with the turtles and helping them move a fucking couch. I am not even kidding. That is ass shit. I had a similar issue with Jackie Chan's Splinter. And look, don't get me wrong. I do like the character in the film. I like how fatherly he is. I like how utterly badass he can be, and I love how funny he is. Jackie Chan does deliver, trust me, but his backstory is completely gone. He knows nothing of ninjutsu before mutating, and the only reason he trains the turtles ninjutsu is because he watches kung fu movies and training videos with them. I mean, granted, it's a lot better than learning ninjutsu from a martial arts book written in Japanese, but 
Come on, guys. You're killing me, Smalls! And look, the way the backstory explains it isn't really bad. It makes sense he'd want to train them in something for protection, given his mistrust of the human world. But now there's no connection between him and Shredder. He has no personal stakes in the story. Again, I don't want to be too critical until I see where they go with it, but come on, guys. This is a fucking staple of Turtles lore. Why would you get rid of it? It's probably the most important part of Turtles lore now that I think about it. How do you fuck that up? How do you fuck that up? Also, Cynthia Utram. Oh, God, Marvin, do I even need to say it? Why are you going to take this? This right here and make it a human woman. I swear to God, if this bitch doesn't have a crane coming out of her chest in the sequel, I'm gonna riot. I mean, considering what they teased at the end of the movie for a potential sequel, it would be pretty damn stupid not to have Krang there, but I guess we'll see. But for what I got in this film, I'm sorry, I found her to be annoying as hell and super generic. Oh yes, I'm going to make an army of mutant snakes and milk your blood for the mutant snakes who sneak behind the enemy lines. Fucking stupid. STUPID! YOU'RE SO STUPID! So yeah, look, I wish I could overlook these problems, people. I, I, I can't. I can't. They're right there. They're smacking me in the goddamn face every time I look at this film. I can accept something being different, but if the differences aren't making the lore better and feel like they're taking away from the story I love, I don't see a point in making them. What was the point in changing Spinner's origin? What was the point of making this a human? What was the point of even having Baxter Stockman if you're not gonna do anything with him? Mutant Mayhem is a lot like Star Trek Into Darkness. Into Darkness is a pretty good film by itself, but ultimately fails as a Star Trek movie. Mutant Mayhem is a good movie on its own, but ultimately fails as a Ninja Turtles film. It does a lot right as a film, especially with the animation. I loved that aspect of it, and would gladly watch the film again just for that. But the way it handled many aspects of the Turtles lore bugged the ever-living crap out of me. Now, I, I don't want to be too harsh until I see a sequel and how they handle things from here, but I'm sorry. If I'm going to crap all over the Michael Bay films for doing half this shit, I have to hold this film's foot to the fire as well. And if I may add, when Out of the Shadows, fucking Out of the Shadows, is adapting Bebop and Rocksteady better than you? We have problems, folks. We have fucking problems. So yeah, I gotta be fair here. I can't have it both ways. If I'm gonna crap on those films, I gotta crap on this for its problems. Both screwed up and both should have known better. As a film in general, I'll give the film a B plus. As a Ninja Turtles film, I'll give it a C minus, so... Hold on, let's let's do some math here. Okay, 70 plus 88 is 58. Okay, divided by 279, so it averages out to a C plus overall. I think it is worth your time in some regard, and if you don't have any connection to the Turtles at all, you might eat this film up. But as a representation of the Ninja Turtles and their lore, and the stories I love, it misses way too many marks for my taste. I'll admit, I haven't been this disappointed in a long time. But what did you guys think of Mutant Mayhem? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or are you somewhere in the middle? Please let me know in the comments, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more.